All right, I think this is the coolest power panel setup that you can do. Um, you can get a eight panel switch on Amazon uh, and you can install it up here. Um, it's really nice. Um, you get a little indicator light whenever you turn on a specific light and then the power button turns them all on and off together as a group, which is nice. Um, tucks away cleanly and nicely uh, and the wire runs through here. I'll show you how to do that part. And uh, yeah, here's the install for it. All right, we got the universal eight gang switch panel system there. Uh, I'll put a link down in the, uh, in the video description. Uh, about $100 on Amazon. Anyway, it comes with a lot of good stuff. Some nice thick power cables to power all, all eight uh, things. Resettable 60 amp fuse, that's nice. Um, and a long control wire. We're gonna put that in the uh, sunglass holder spot. Uh, first thing we're gonna look at is this bracket. Uh, this bracket is what holds all the, uh, the relays. So here's the engine bay. And uh, there's a nice little area here that's pretty clear <clears throat> and in close proximity to the battery. So um, if you loosen this 10 millimeter bolt, uh, you can slip one leg of this bracket down behind it and then tighten it up and it rests nicely, the other side rests nicely, across the top of uh, this bracket. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, you might have to bend this leg just a little bit uh, to get the bracket to sit nice and flat. All right, so you can see that that leg is uh, bent out a little bit, and that works pretty nicely. Um, loosen up that 10 mil right here, like I said, and this bracket goes behind. The, uh, the black plastic piece, like this, yep, and then rests on uh, the top of that bracket, like I said, yep, and so that's where the uh, control panel is going to go, so we'll add that next. Okay, so this is the control box. It mounts with uh, uh, two bolts, and there's some normal looking holes here, and then some slots here. Um, let me show the inside first. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. There's eight different channels and the channels have different power levels. Uh, the first two can handle up to 5 amps, the next two up to 10 amps, 20, and then 30 amps. This corresponds to the fuses, but of course you should swap out these fuses with uh, fuses that are just uh, beefy enough to handle the normal load so that they are the first thing to burn out. Um, if they do burn out, there are little red LEDs in here that you can see in between uh, the green terminals and the fuses themselves. That turns red when it burns out, which is pretty nice for diagnosis. Um, this one's red, you know, it's the positive, main positive, main negative, and then your control panel goes here, and I think that's for changing the brightness, this one. Anyway, so with the wires that go into these positive and negative terminals here, travel up through this little gap where my finger is. Um, you could mount it in the um, forwardmost position, but if you put it here, then you won't be able to take this fuse box off, which is really annoying. Um, if you move it back, then it's getting blocked by this metal plate. So you have to move it to the far back position, which opens up a slot uh, for you to run your wires to each of your channels. So we're gonna mount it in the third slot back there, and then, uh, and then keep going. All right, uh, the power panel is mounted to the bracket. The bracket is still loose because we might have to move it and stuff like that. Uh, what we're gonna direct our attention to now are the power cables that came with it. Um, it comes with a long black, long red, and a short red, and a resettable fuse. This one's pretty sweet. If this gets triggered, like if the total load exceeds 60 amps, um, that little red lever will pop out, your stuff will stop working, and you'll need to reset it by moving the red lever back. You can test it by hitting the little red button. Pretty nice feature. Anyway, um, the black wire is super simple. That goes from your negative battery terminal to the um, negative power input terminal. There's one catch though, back here. It's especially important when you're doing something like a winch. Um, you should use this terminal because it's like pure metal direct connection. This one, there's like a weird little switch thing. I don't know what the S stands for, probably switch. Yeah, I probably wouldn't mess with that side. But this side, pure metal, simple, reliable, use this one. So we'll go from here, neatly through here, 
up through this crack to the negative. Um, the positive does not go to the power panel actually, it goes to this resettable fuse which will mount about here to this plastic because on the other side of the fuse you have to use the short red wire which will mock up. It goes like this from the positive terminal down through the hole to the resettable fuse. right? And then for this to fit, um, it's usually helpful to notch out a little bit of this plastic here. Leave the clip, definitely leave the clip, but this other stuff you can notch it out and then you can get an easier angle to attach that. And then once we do that, we'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so uh, we took the plastic cover off. I'll show you the reset mechanism. If you hit the red button, it'll test it. Boop. And so that's what it'll do if you draw more than 60 amps, which is a nice safety feature. Uh, you can reset it just by putting the lever back. Anyway, we connected it here and we held it up to uh, the plastic. This plastic does flex and move quite a bit. Um, we used a punch to mark uh, the two holes and then we used uh, two small flathead screwdrivers to pop out the three plastic clips that are here, here, and here. And then now we can remove this piece of plastic and drill the holes to secure the resettable fuse. All right, so this is what it looks like when you mount the fuse. Uh, you know, of course, you should like mark a hole, install that bolt, and then um, you know drill through to make the second hole in the perfect location, as you can see. Um, unfortunately, the the bolts that were included were not quite long enough, maybe because we used washers um, to spread the force. But uh, but yeah, we used uh, M6 bolts. There it is, looking very good. These little things here are probably unnecessary, but they cover the, uh, the terminals. But that's also covered by the plastic cover. Now one thing though that I'll point out, because it's here now, when you put this over, um, the uh, power wire needs to come out through this section, so we're gonna have to remove this section of the uh, plastic cover, leaving this little clippy leg though. So we're gonna do that and then show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so um, this is just mocked up. Uh, it's not even attached yet. And this isn't attached either, but you can see that the, the battery wire, sorry, the positive wire wants to come out of the bottom. Uh, and so that's where we uh, change this notch so that it can fit over just like that. And it's required because uh, this, this cable is a little short. Okay, to get uh, voltage from the battery, uh, we're gonna use, of course, the wire that they included. Um, you can connect it to uh, this point here, run it underneath the bracket, and to um, the input side of the fuse. It really doesn't matter which side of the fuse. I mean, it's not directional. You could do either side, but we're gonna run it to here because um, the other one is on the bottom and it makes it a little easier to connect. So that's how we're gonna connect the positive side. All right, as you can see here, um, this is all set up. Um, power goes from the uh, positive terminal uh, underneath the bracket to the far side of the fuse. Um, then it comes out the bottom to the input of the power panel. Uh, the very last thing to do is to connect the negative power cable. That's gonna go from right here up through here and into the negative input. Alright, uh, we connected the negative power wire to here. It runs up to there, the ground I guess I should say. Anyway, uh, so at this point um, it has positive, it has negative, and like you might expect it to work, but you have to wake it up, uh, usually with uh, like switched auxiliary power, ignition power, right? Uh, a power source that only comes on when, when the car is on. Um, and that's what you need uh, this cable for. There's two wires, um, a red and a white. They go here. And the red wire, um, this is what you're gonna attach to the uh, ignition power, like the automatic switched power that wakes, wakes this up. Uh, the white wire, when you tap it to ground, um, it cycles the screen through the different brightnesses. And it does have a memory, so you can just like cut this one short and like tap it to negative under the hood to adjust it, and it'll just stay however you leave it. 
in my opinion, the screen is always really bright, so setting it and leaving it at the lowest brightness setting um, is good to go. So what we're going to do now is use a fuse tap to um, connect this positive wire to um, a switched auxiliary power or ignition wire. So um, just about any of these empty slots in here works. Um, we just need to cut this to length, add a fuse tap, and then boom, this power panel will automatically wake up when you start the car and automatically turn off uh, when you turn the car off, usually with like a 30 second delay. Cool, we'll do that and then show you what it looks like. All right, this is approximately what the wire should look like. Um, on this end, we cut this short uh, because we just tap it to ground to cycle through the brightnesses. And on this side, we um, connected a fuse tap um, we borrowed the seven and a half amp fuse from the top of the cover where there are some spares. We'll replace it later. Um, and then you can use just about any of these empty slots. So like this, that works. Um, and if you run it down, you can run through this opening. Um, it's in the fuse box. And this can go up through here. And uh, come on. All right. And then boom, that connects there. And we can tidy this up tuck this down, make this look nice. But the important thing is that uh, just use one of these empty slots in this region here. It should come on when you turn the ignition on so the screen should light up. And then if you run this cable down to here, um, that's where there's already an opening. Yeah. And then that's an easy way for the, uh, for the power wire the power wire to exit. Kind of like that, but fully snapped down. So then we'll turn the car ignition on and the screen should light up. All right, a small correction. Uh, you tap the white wire to, uh, to positive to cycle through the brightnesses, as you can see there. Um, and I'll tell you, at night, uh, anything but the lowest brightness level is extremely bright. Um, luckily, this has a memory, like I mentioned earlier, so you can uh, set it to dim and then just leave it there. Um, to pass the control wires into the cabin, we're gonna use this empty grommet. Um, it's hard to see, um, but it says SJ, and it's a vertical oval right there. And that pops out uh, just above the pedals um, in the driver's footwell. So we're gonna grab that, put a hole in it, approximately the size of this wire for the, for the control panel. And then um, we're gonna run that up the A pillar. I'll show you how that pops off. We're going to go across the top and um, have the control box in the sunglass holder. It's going to be sick. It's going to be sick, dude. All right, so we want the switch panel to be in here, right? Um, that means that we're going to have to make a little hole up here for the power wire to go out. Um, it's going to go across the top of the headliner um, through here. And then we're going to run it down the A-pillar. Ow. Which you can remove just by popping out on it. Um, there's an airbag in there because Subarus are so safe. Um, and it has these little plastic clips um, that are on lanyards that you can see. You have to do a little twisty maneuver to undo them. When this goes off, it actually rotates the other direction, and this stays up and out of your way while the airbag deploys to save you. So um, let's address this. This is uh, this is going to be the trickiest part. Um, we're going to use a plastic pry tool to take this black plastic piece off, and then we're going to switch to an eight mil and remove. Oh, they're Phillips now. Okay. Um, a Phillips head screwdriver to remove this screw and this screw and then we should be able to pop this whole panel down. Alright, with the uh, two Phillips head screws removed we should be able to um, drop this white plastic part by um, gently prying down on it. There's just some plastic clips. Ta-da! And then there's a couple wires. Look at that. We can uh, unhook these wires like this. Um, actually, we should disconnect the battery terminal so that the Subaru never knows that we disconnected this. 
Yeah, let's do that and then we'll disconnect this and then we'll drill our hole and then we'll run our wire through there, down the A pillar, through the grommet, connecting it and, uh, and we'll be done. All right, uh, here's the top of that panel. Um, there you can see the hole that we drilled on the top left uh, on the uh, flat horizontal top surface there. It's got to be a pretty big hole because um, you have to feed uh, this through. Um, this is the switch side of it and that's got to go up through there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to route the long cable and uh, and then we need to mount this. This looks like about the right thickness. We're going to go outside and measure mine. Um, probably take some three-quarter ply, cut it to size, uh, use some VHB, you know, some really strong double-sided 3M tape um, to connect this to the back. And then this goes in here like this. You know what I mean? Nice and flat. And uh, yeah, almost done. All right, so um, luckily there's a break in the control cable uh, near the control box. Uh, and what we need to do is start routing uh, the very long section of this cable. So this is going to pop into the box uh, about here. Um, we can always slide this more. But the way that you want to run this cable is uh, like grab a loop and put it over this black plastic piece and push that in. And you'll see that it uh, goes in pretty easily. And then you can use your fingertips to kind of like tuck it up. Uh, in the crack of the headliner where it just magically disappears and then what we're gonna do is we're going to zip tie this um, back against and with uh, this other electrical cable that's really really thick um, and then we're gonna follow that down um, and we're gonna feed the end of it into the dash where it's gonna pop through the grommet hole and then go to the control box all right, so this is the back of the power panel, and this is uh, a block that we made. It's about 15 millimeters thick, and we added uh, 3M VHB uh, double-sided tape, and uh, that is gonna go in between the switch panel and the sunglass holder. So go ahead and assemble it. 